Yo, what's up everyone? I'm Solar Pocket, trying to do another GP video because recently I saw that a lot of you... Ooh, let me lower that. Let me lower that. What the hell is the announcer still out for? For what reason? But yeah, I'm going to try and do this GP versus Darius video because I received a lot of DMs on Twitter, messages on Discord, and even in my stream of how to face matchups like Darius, um, Vladimir, pretty much anything that could really jump on you. I'm blanking out on other things. Oh, like Riven. Riven and Darius are two big ones that I get all the time. So hopefully I can show you guys how to destroy these types of matchups. And if you guys do like the video, make sure you leave a comment down below saying what you want to see next. Subscribe and like the video if you liked it. So first thing I want to do into the Darius matchup, go Corrupting Pot, Grasp, Inspiration, Secondary. And what I want to do is two build paths. If I'm able to, I want to get Sheen on first back. If I'm not confident in this matchup, I can go Rush Tabbies into a Sheen, or I can go D-Blade Longsword. I highly recommend getting used to D-Blade Longsword. Let me just poke him out right now. And he usually goes Q start, so I run back into his Q. Go forward, and get some good poke off there. Careful not to walk into his Q, so I went out in every trade, sneaking an auto here and there, so that level 2, I have lethal on this guy. Lethal, I mean, I can just kill him. Okay, as I literally walk into his Q. And he just dies. So, he's actually not that experienced, because I see that he doesn't have a mastery on Darius, and he also, he didn't opt to go D-Shield. Usually, if you're playing this matchup, you always want a D-Shield. But either way, because we abuse him early, level 1, we make sure we dodge his Q so that he can't sustain anything. It's pretty much just... free. <laughs> now, what I do beyond it, though, is very important, because there's people who are still struggling versus Darius post-6. They can get a kill on him, they can bully him all in lane, and then all of a sudden they can't transition, to, transition that into a victory. So the way I'm going to be doing that is, as my jungler dies from invading... Yeah, let me just meet these two people. Hey, Graves, actually, Graves is right. Or not right, I mean, like, he actually owned up to that, which is kind of surprising. I wasn't expecting that at all. Now, I'm not going to TP. I'll unmute him. It's usually because I don't want to, like, I don't want to argue. I'd rather just carry the game and let it be that. But anyways... So Darius did get a red buff, so this would be a little bit harder. Did Darius burn any sums? Make sure I communicate with my team, just so I don't miss out on free kill. Betrayal stings like salt on a wound. He used both. Okay. Good to know. Now, since this wave is slow pushing into me, I want to be able to set a freeze. But I'm not going to rush on all-inning in, all him yet, either. Because I do want to all-in him. But I want to make sure I'm able to set a freeze first. And then pressure him into trying to fight me. <laughs> Eat shit, dude. God, you're trash. You know what? I can respect that. Everyone's entitled to their own wrong opinion. But you know what? We're going to just tilt him more. If once this cannon falls, it's I could solo kill him there right here. How they try. Oh, Bell Cause is back. Another. And thank you, Mr. Graves, for helping me out here, brother. Now I don't need the graves here and I did end up solo killing him. He would have died anyways because his Q was on cooldown, he also had no sums. I'm gonna get here, wait for the five minute mark, because the five minute mark is when the turret resistances are way lower. Like here. Now I'm not gonna kill this wave because the next wave again is gonna stack up and it's gonna slow push back into me, meaning that I don't have to burn my TP. And he can't push this wave fast enough then this cannon wave can get there. Since I know it's a cannon. I know that I don't need to burn my TP. I could burn my TP if I want to and just keep bullying him, but then that leaves myself open to getting ganked by Elise. And I'd rather save my TP for bot lane anyways, especially since on this patch, 
at the time of this recording, uh, TP buffs are live. Meaning, I can TP bot lane, and I can just zoom around and kill someone. But ultimately, as GP, you always want to make sure that you're not burning your TP unless you absolutely have to. Because, let's be real here, there's a lot of matchups when you're playing GP that with one kill, just steamroll you. Or with one one death by the jungler, like I'm sure we've all felt it, can just roll you. One of those is also Darius. So TP helps to pretty much negate that or lessen that effect so that there's still a uh, hope of recovering. Also, as you can see, what I'm trying to do with my movement is trying to make it hard for him to predict what I'm going to do next. Since I know he just used his Q, but he hit level 6, I'm going to have to respect it. So I can either wait to my level 6 or I can wait for him to mess up. Kill that minion, and here's where I want to set the freeze. And by freezing, I'm putting him into a scenario where if he walks up, I poke him. But if he doesn't walk up, he misses out on the golden XP of these minions, making it a lose-lose situation. Hence, he's probably going to reset to try and break the freeze. But once I hit level 7, it is virtually impossible for him to break the freeze because I can ju just bully him out with my barrel CD as well. And I'll show you guys exactly how to kite a Darius when you are level 7, level 13 at all levels. So long as the enemy doesn't FF at 15. Alright. Showtime. There we go. So I want to mention two things on that solo kill. I... When... Okay. When people have auto reset in top lane, like Lowey, Fiora, Darius, when they're against GP, they're going to try and use their auto reset to hit your barrel. So if you predict that they're going to do that beforehand, and also you can hear this is Siren outside my room, yes. Um, you'll be able to, you'll be able to get the upper hand on them because if you land that barrel, that means you're guaranteed to land the Q as well, and that leads to really good poke, especially in matchups where they just want to all in you. Like Darius, if I fight from 100% HP, odds are I'm not going to kill him. But if I poke him down, get a few Qs here and there, then it'll be much more in my favor. I'm going to TP here because. Honestly, I'm feeling I'm feeling confident in myself. And save my flash here. Now I'm actually going to stand till I have my Triforce. Because I'm going to push this wave, I'll sell my D-Blade, and then I will have my Triforce. Wait, no, 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 no. Uh, he can get that blade if he wants. I kind of want to just sell my D blade, get a control ward, and get back to top lane as soon as I can. I don't want to go in top lane because it's very, very easy for him to get dove. In fact, I don't even think I needed to sell my... Yeah, I didn't need to sell it because I actually was in range, I think, for the plate. Yeah, I don't want him getting dove, so might as well just say, Hey, you know what? Go back to your lane. Everything's cool. We got the kills. We're chilling. So, notice I, how I didn't orange the trap right away, because I wanted to orange either the brand stun or Elise Cocoon. The trap was the least of my concerns. Also, I didn't tunnel on the Kate. I focused completely everything I had to that... to that brand. Ooh. He's got him. Sheesh. Alright, good job, I guess. Yeah, let me type a good job, son. But yeah, a good thing on GP to note is never settle for what's in front of you. Sure, you can land a barrel on one person, but can you land a barrel on the person who nobody's even looking at yet? Can you land it on that support, on that mid laner, on that AD carry? Because what separates a good GP from a great GP is maximizing your lead. Because they see people all the time get a lead and they say, I got my lead, I still lose. Even when I coach people, which by the way, I do offer, just add me on Discord or DM me on Twitter and we can settle something. But anyways, 
people say, I got a lead. I got I was 40 CS up. I was a kill up. Why did I lose this game? Now, on other champions, like maybe, say, Vladimir, you can get a lead. It's acceptable, and maybe you can win the game. On GP, that's not acceptable. You have to be maximizing your lead. Because if you don't maximize your lead, then compared to other champions, the game is so much harder to carry. However, if you are able to maximize your lead from the very beginning, and I'm just going to tank him for this tower. Make sure there's no output potential. If he lands that he only ults me with Conquer, I'm pretty sure I die. Even though he's 2 and 5, as crazy as that is. That's what you gotta do when this, you're in the Darius matchup. But yeah, you always gotta be maximizing your lead. And you're always gonna be looking on... Look, be looking beyond what's in front of you. Like, even in scenarios where you think you can get a kill, right? Like, let's say there is a person... You see this pink ward? Let's say there's a person here, and there's a person here where I pinged. The bush and the pink are representative of two champions. Also gonna roam towards Ba and see if I can help them out. But, anyways. You should leave this person, who is this pink ward, for your team. And you should focus on the person who's in the bush, so that way instead of getting two kills, or instead of getting one, just one kill, you can get two. Also roaming bot, because as you can see I pushed in top lane, I am just chilling at the moment, and I'm gonna try and affect the rest of the map. Also, for all of you who are interested, I do play everything on normal get normal cast. I do not play anything quick cast except for D, which is teleport or ignite. Now, you don't have to follow these settings. It's just something that I'm used to. Something I also used to do way back in my day. It, yes, I said in my day. Is I used to play a bunch of bot games. And I would not stop playing these bot games. I would Any champion I played, beginner, five games, intermediate, three games, normal, one game or two games, then I bring it into ranked. Now, I know that's something that not many people do, but it's something that I always did, which is why I was able to get so good mechanically at like every champion I played. Because I never gave up, and I always had the mentality that I need to find this person's combos, and I don't need to worry about failure. You could say it's like... Oh! Oh! I miss... I miss, uh, orange there. I thought she would orange early and I tried to side them. That was completely my fault. I could have outplayed that. Anyways. <clears throat> she uses ult, she uses heal. I'll build straight into my IE. The core on GP is try. ER IE. But anyways, like I was saying, being able to practice your combos and practice tool or applying it in normal games or in lower elo games first can always help at bettering yourself. You don't always have to have that 1v9 in, you know, challenger to prove that you're good at a champion. You can slowly build your way up to that success. But yeah, just thought I'd want to throw that out there. Now, this Darius is very tilted. He's going to try and make a play <laughs> on the map. And as you can see, it's not working out well for him. And let's see. Yeah, his mental's not doing. Must suck given that you're going to lose. Yeah, he's a little angry. But it's alright, because I'm here to shut down his ego. Now, once I reach level 13, their entire team comp to me is dirt. However, in these moments, I do have to respect the Fizz, specifically. Because Fizz has the burst to, if I, if I make a mistake, he will punish me more than any other champion on their team, including Darius. Need to watch out. It's so like I said, planning ahead. I saw Caitlyn going to clear the wave. I think to myself, if she comes over there, I can one part her over the wall. TP mid lane, no reason really to, because my team is so ahead. I kind of thought the fight would be close. But I'll get mid tower, look beyond that little chase that they're doing there, and go for the objectives. 
Now, as for the ELO of this game, I am not very sure at all. Because this account, I believe, decayed from Diamond. And then I kind of limit tested a little bit on it. So it might be Plat MMR. Which is about the vast majority of the viewer base, anyways. So, of, of my viewer base. So if you're a higher ELO, you can still take the things that I'm saying into account in your GP games. But for the lower ELO people, try to hang on to everything I'm saying. Because what I'm saying now is stuff I always practice. No matter the game, no matter the champion. Well, that's a lie. In other champions, I, I'm, I'm kind of uh, a bit stuck. I will not lie. But on GP, I know my stuff. Now, close to level 13, I'm going to have in like three waves, I'd say. Get this scuttle crab, take their jungle camps, try to expand my lead as many ways as I can. Now, notice what I did early. Because I saved my TP and I didn't use her for laning phase, what happened? I got three kills bot lane, helping my bot to get back in the game since they were behind a little bit, and giving me an even bigger lead so I can kill, uh, so I can kill everyone on their team. What happens after? I, ooh, let's see if I can just 100 to zero him. I'll have to play it smart, of course. <laughs> Excuse me. No, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight him. Or, or at least I don't want him to have the upper hand. I want him to be the one face checking me, not the other way around. Because the way I have it in my head, the way my plan goes is he walks into me, not I walk into him. Now he does have quite a bit of movement speed, but with Corrupting Pot, as you can see here, just watch it in one second here, 388 to 408. He has 430, but he has 411 base movement speed, so I will still be able to... And we need to back up here. Need to get out of there. Close to my infinity edge. I'll get mid wave, get level 13, see if I can do an outplay on them bot lane now. Don't think I die. But it's good to know they have vision there. Okay. Got my level 13 finally. I know she's gonna back, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go right here. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go right there and die. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I was hoping, I think they had a control ward here because I didn't see one there and I don't think she would have warded there unless they had vision in the mid. Either way, it was a valiant effort. And I got her heal at least. Not bad, but I think he's about to get dunked. Oh, oh. <coughs> that was some mechanics. Ooh, and some damage too. My god. Alright. So we did secure dragon. Also, notice the the poke that I put out, right? Because they, I think they would have dragon rushed had I not done so much damage to Fizz, to the Darius who flashed, the Elise who flashed. Although my ult was bad on the Elise, I will admit, burning her sums I think is much more, much more valuable. Now that I'm level 13, I'm gonna group up with my team and see what I can do. Brands over here. Don't want to mess with them yet. Oh. Christ, okay. At least one shots me. That's good to know. Well, I still want to go crit. I'm going to continue building crit. And although my last two deaths were a bit of a limit testing, I will not lie. <laughs> 
Uh, we're still insanely far ahead of the other team. And where did that all stem from? The early game that I played. It allows me to do just dumb stuff like this and still be so insanely ahead. Like, I'm gonna try and catch this guy right here. Let's see, I think he's roaming down bot lane, but there's a chance I can still catch him. Let's go see where he's hiding. Where are you, Darius? What? Okay, well he actually just disappeared. Now I'm gonna go PD, I think, because the only the only thing that's stopping me is their burst, burst from Elise and uh, Fizz. And while I can go Ma, I'd rather continue to build onto the crit that I already have. Because try at ER IE is GP's biggest spike. So I'm just gonna keep on continuing that spike through crit items. Okay. Okay, it's good to know where Elise is. Take this blast cone over, see if I can help my team. Got stunned. Alright, looks like it's a free Baron then. Did not see any signs of Elise trying to tamper with anything. And now I'm not 95% crit. And we are living the life at the moment. Just being a little safe in case Darius has flash, he can just Q, flash, ult, dunk me, and I'm dead. Okay, we get soul here. At least I've seen a GP beat a Darius for the first time. Nice. <laughs> Bad game lagging. Now that I am have Infernal Soul, I'm pretty sure I can one-shot anything now. Might even just sell this zeal and go for a full infinity inch. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. Nice. Where'd Elise go? I swear I just saw her. And now I say GG top gap. <laughs> because his Darius has been shit talking all game, but he couldn't hold up to it. <gasps> nice. And that's a GG. Well, I hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope you guys feel like you grew a little bit mentally, that your brain is becoming stronger and stronger. And yeah, 
guys, I'm going to be trying to output as many videos as I can right now, especially with this whole corona thing going around. I have no idea what the hell is going on. I don't even know if I'm going back to school. But anyways, this is how you 1v9 a game as Gangplank versus Darius. Hope you guys enjoyed a lot. And although, although the Darius wasn't exactly the, the most uh, mechanical player in the world, it indeed was still a good game. So... Hope to see you guys in the next video. Be sure to uh, rate, comment, subscribe, and bye-bye.